What's Gucci everyone? It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood and today I'm gonna to make another video continuing on the subject of generics which was what my last video was on in part 10 I believe now I'm on and it's gonna be about generic structures. So we did a generic method but now we're gonna make a more generic structure. Woo! And don't worry it's pretty easy and dandy just follow my lead. So what I'm gonna start out here is we're gonna create a structure and a structure allows us to create methods and store elements with it so that it can um, symbolize something. So a structure can symbolize an apple or a city, or in our instance, we're gonna make so something known as in computer science as a stack. And what a stack is, is what I'd like you to imagine, is I want, like to imagine a stack as kind of um, a lot of plates, like you're stacking plates. And when you put one plate on, you put a, one plate on top of each other, each other. And whenever you want to put on an additional plate, you put it on the top of the stack of the plates. And if you need a plate, if you need a plate from the stack, you only take it from the top. And if you reach in the middle, you break the stack and everything falls down and shatters. And that's what exactly the rules are of a stack. You can only add on to the end and you can only take from, you can only remove from the end. So without further ado, now I've created my stack with this special generic symbol T. Now what the T doesn't matter. It could be E, it could be S, or it could be, you know, any kind of um, capital letter is usually what you want to do. And what it does is it's, it symbolizes that when I create this struct, I'm going to pass it another type. And it could be any type. It could be a type we define, like an apple type, or it could be an integer string char float. But it needs to be a type. That's how generics work, is they generically morph to that type that you give it. And so with that type that I'm getting passed in, I can then define my whole structure around that type. So for instance, I'm going to say that whatever type I get passed in, I'm going to make an items array of type T that's initially empty. And then I'm going to make the two functions for my stack, which are known as push and pop. Push is push something to the end of the stack, pop is remove something from the end of the stack, if you remember my explanation from earlier. And so right now, I'm going to write this out quickly, and then I'll explain it, because I think that's usually kind of a better way. And so what I'm going to do here is I am going is I'm going to make this function, I have a func push that takes the item of the type I defined up here in line three. And what that does is it simply appends that item to the end of the list. And the reason because I have this funky new keyword here called mutating means that I have to put in the mutating keyword because it's changing a global variable with inside our structure. Global variable meaning everything can see it. That's what global means is everything can see with inside this stack structure. And so now I'm also going to make the other method from my um, the other method from my stack, which is the one I said, pop. And what pop is going to do is it is going to remove a T, a type T from my array. It's going to always remove the last one. It's also going to return it to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do items dot remove last. And so what this is going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm changing my array here. It's a function called pop. And then I use kind of this rocket arrow symbol right here that returns type T, whatever type they gave me, and it's going to return that the last item in the array, which I know is type T because my array accept, accepts items of type T. Ain't that dandy. And don't forget the closing and opening braces in your structure, which I just lowered down for you guys. So let's test this thing out right here. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to do var, I'm going to do stack of strings. And let's do a stack. And I'm going to make it now here within these um, brack or arrows, I can, I can put what I want. So I want it to be of type string. So now I've defined this stack type as type string. So that's going to matric matriculate right to right here, to right here, and to right here. So then I can deal with the whole stack. So then I'm going to do, oh, it's not. I'm going to do stack of string. And then I'm going to do dot push so I'm gonna push I'm gonna add something to the stack by simply pushing a string because it needs a type of string I'm gonna do uno and then I'm gonna do stack of string and then I'm gonna push something else call and then let's call it dose and so now what's gonna happen is simply is simply I pushed uno onto the stack so at that time 
Uno is at the top of the stack, but then in line 18 right here, sorry, in DOS, I, I'm gonna push DOS on. So now DOS is on the top of the stack. It's the only item I can retrieve with my pop method. So simply, if I pop something from the stack and I print it out, as you can see here on the right side, I get DOS. DOS is what is returned to me. In this, in this stack, there's no way for me to access Uno unless I pop DOS first and then I pop Uno. So that's kind of the purpose of a stack. It's a way to control your array so users may not be able to mess with it more than you want to. So that's pretty cool. And you can implement this other ways. That's known as encapsulation where your users don't know what's going on. They just know that it's doing the right thing for you. But that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope you have the best day of your lives.